Here we have one more type of conic section, and this is called a hyperbola. It happens when you intersect both lobes of this uh, set of cones, and you get uh, two sets of arms uh, that kind of open up and extend down to infinity. That's a hyperbola, and we're going to look at how to graph that. I actually want to start by looking at something you should already be familiar with. This is the standard form for an ellipse. So it's set equal to 1, and then you have an x squared term, and the number inside is the x coordinate of the center, or the negative x coordinate of the center, and same with the, uh, the y squared term. And then these uh, numbers on the bottom, the denominators, those determine how wide and how tall your ellipse is. You take the square roots of those numbers, and that's the distance from the center to the vertex or the covertex. So that's the, the standard form for an ellipse. The standard form for a hyperbola has just one difference. Instead of adding the x term and the y term, we're subtracting them. So if I just replace this plus with a minus, we get this hyperbola. And if you subtract the y term from the x term, you're going to have this kind of hyperbola that opens these big arms open to the left and the right. If I reverse that, if I put the y first and we subtract the x term, you get a, a hyperbola that opens up and down like this one. There's a special technique for graphing a hyperbola that's a little bit different. These the, uh, arms here look pretty um, diagonal. Uh, they're not curved very much, and that's because there are some diagonal asymptotes that uh, these lines approach. And uh, so I'll show you the method we use to, to graph a hyperbola. So here is a reminder about the standard form. This one opening left and right, this one opening up and down. Only difference is this is x minus y, and this is y minus x. And here, in this problem, we're given an equation. And it doesn't exactly look like it's in standard form. The y part maybe does, but the x part doesn't. And that's easy enough to fix. We can just go ahead and put this over 1. Now, we have this form, because the y term comes first, and then we subtract the x term. Uh, so this is going to be a, a hyperbola that opens up and down. And our coordinates for the center are 6 and negative 4. So just like all these other um, things like a circle or an ellipse, a hyperbola has a center. And we definitely want to plot that. It's not actually going to be part of the hyperbola's lines, but it's going to be necessary for plotting it. So 6, negative 4 would be here. And the next thing we do, actually, is we draw a rectangle. We get the dimensions of that rectangle from these denominators. So what's ever under the y, in this case, this a, it's going to be a two a units tall, this rectangle. It's going to be up a units and down a units from the center. Here, our a is 16, so we take the square, or a squared is 16. We take the square root of that, that's 4. So our rectangle is going to go up four units to here and down four units to here. I'll just make a couple of, of dash marks in there. Now let's look at the, um, the width. We have a one down here. We take the square root of that. That's still one. So we're going to go one unit over here and one unit over here from the center. And then we can finish filling in this rectangle. We'll just draw dashed lines here. All right, now we've got our rectangle. What happens next is you actually draw diagonal lines uh, through your rectangle from you know opposite uh, vertices here. So let me just see if I can grab a line tool to make this a little easier. So I would start at one vertex of the the uh, rectangle and draw a diagonal line there. Make sure it continues down the other side. And then I would do the same thing here. All right, so there are my diagonals. Now, the hyperbola is going to have two vertexes. The ends of the of the little curves where it changes direction. 
And those are going to happen. Let me get my pencil tool back here. They're going to happen where this rectangle touches um, here. So here's one vertex lined up with the center and where the end of the rectangle is. And here's the other vertex. And then once you've got your vertices and you've got your diagonals drawn in here, you can just sketch this and make the, um, the hyperbola approach that diagonal asymptotically. And same going up. And this should get ever closer without touching. So there is our hyperbola.